Over three chapters, the book of Genesis vividly describes a worldwide flood that began with all the fountains of the great deep bursting forth and the floodgates of heaven being opened. The reality of Noah's flood is the crux of the conflict between evolutionary and biblical worldviews. If this global deluge really happened, then the millions of years of earth history and evolutionary progression supposedly seen in the fossil record are swept away. The flood accounts for the major geological features and the vast majority of the fossil record. Indeed, the fossils themselves are a mute testimony to the truth of the flood. We find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. Just what you would expect from the biblical account. If Christians were to believe and effectively defend the biblical account of the flood, then the basis for the evolutionary worldview would largely collapse. Many people would be saved from such a great pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. In our continuing episodes relative to the appearance of man in the fossil record. We now come to the famous Neanderthal man, first discovered in the Neander Valley in Germany. This fellow was stoop-shouldered, slanted brow, appeared to be rather brutish and was so recognized that way until additional discoveries reveal that this individual had rickets from lack of exposure lack of vitamin D, lack of exposure to sunshine. He lived during the Ice Age and essentially was contemporary with Job in the Bible. The additional skeletal remains of Neanderthal man showed them to be an incredibly advanced civilization. They even performed surgery. They had hearths. They had a large guild with workshops, with tools, artifacts, stone, leather, wood, and bone. It was later discovered that these individuals actually lived longer than people do today. Actual laboratory tests have been run indicating that some of these Neanderthal people lived to be over 200 years in age just a few thousand years ago. So what are the real facts about Neanderthal? Well, his skeletal remains show that he was about our height in stature, but his bones were thicker. He was more robust. He was more attuned to his environment. And his cranial capacity, in contrast to ours being average 1,350 cc's, his cranial capacity averaged 1,450 cc's. His brain was larger than ours. That is absolutely incredible. So it is now recognized that detailed comparisons of Neanderthal skeletal remains with those of modern humans have shown that there is nothing in Neanderthal anatomy that conclusively indicates locomotor, manipulative, intellectual, or linguistic abilities inferior to those of modern humans. And this was written in Natural History, a secular evolutionary journal. In addition to that, Neanderthal care and compassion have been indicated with a number of broken bones having been mended, old people having been taken care of, elaborate rituals in funerary. We find these individuals as sophisticated as ourselves in our culture. Isolated, yes, living in the Ice Age in caves and under cliffs, they wouldn't have access to larger profile of artifacts, but under their conditions, they were actually superior to modern man. So thus, the Neanderthal is not in evolutionary development, but was actually contemporary with Job. And as Job's companions knew about the Creator and the evidence in the stars, it is apparent that Neanderthal and his entire civilization as well as his contemporary Erignatians and Cromagnons actually knew about the Creator as has been revealed in the Scriptures. In the pre-flood world, people are living over 900 years on average. Now ask yourself this, 
would it make sense that the bone structure and cranial capacity of humans, living for over 900 years on average, would be superior to that of our own? Genesis 6.3 takes place just before the flood and seemed to cause an immediate and rapid degeneration within the next few generations. So much so that the grandparents would easily and outlive their grandchildren. Okay, now ask yourself this. Could Genesis 6.3 explain an alteration to human DNA that would not only affect age, but the bone structure of humans? <laughs>